Thank you. Uh, thank you for the warm introduction. And it's really a pleasure to be here with you today. I don't come at the work that I do and I'm going to share with you from the lens of landscapes. So this might miss the mark totally, or it might be a breath of fresh air as we go through our conversation this morning. But there's a lot of commonality in what we're all trying to achieve. Uh, the lens that I look through is one around sustainable finance, bringing private capital into these types of transactions, these types of opportunities. And it's from that lens that I really want to talk to you this morning about knowing your and owning your role. So really knowing the type of capital you have and owning your role within the sustainable finance ecosystem. We're all very familiar with the challenges that Robert and Laura laid out this morning that bring us together. Uh, the sheer problems that can be overwhelming and feel out of our control. And that's why I want to take time this morning to encourage us to go inward and to understand the role we play, so to get a little control back, to feel empowered, and then to think about, once we really understand our role, how we interact with others and fit into this larger equation of resources to tackle the challenges that we know that are apparent, and that that in itself can be really key in thinking about how we unlock the trillions of dollars we need to really achieve the sustainable development goals within this landscape problem sits. The role that I take, that I come to this conversation, is that as a finance practitioner. What I do every day is not very sexy, shall I say, but it's what I do, and that is move money from investor to investment every day. Uh, the organization, as Robert mentioned, that I lead is Calvert Impact Capital, and we're a bit unique. We manage assets, we manage private capital. We raise the assets that we manage through selling a note into the capital markets. It's a fixed income product that US investors buy, retail accredited institutional. That note, we then take the proceeds of and we invest across the globe, 100 countries in all impact sectors. There is a percentage of our work that goes squarely into the work that you deeply care about in this room around landscapes and sustainability. But we have a very broad portfolio and therefore a very broad perspective. Within the investments that we lend to, we primarily lend to intermediaries. So we're lending to funds and structures that then on lend to businesses or enterprises that are working in place and community. So we're a fund, we lend to fund, we're a fund of funds. Importantly, the businesses that we're lending to, the intermediaries, are ones that are left behind by traditional markets. If the traditional markets could finance, and that is the capital markets or a local bank in place providing a loan, if they could finance these groups, we wouldn't. That is not our place. Also importantly, the groups that we're investing in are really challenging the status quo. They're really thinking about how to incorporate equitable and sustainable outcomes alongside financial return. So in our portfolio today, we have about 120 investments. Those investments in 2016, for example, made 5 million investments and put $7.6 billion of capital to work. That's the power of leverage. So we have one foot in the capital markets. We very much understand what's happening in the capital markets, what private capital is looking for, and how it's responding. And then we have another foot in communities in place. And what we really do is serve as a connector between these two worlds. And so it's from that perspective that we can see what's working in both places for investors and communities and we can then start moving capital more effectively. And from where I sit at this intersection, at this interplay, I do see a lot of promise, not just for today's investment dollars from the private capital, getting into the types of transactions, supporting the types of investments that we deeply care about and see that are good for people and planet, but also for tomorrow's. I think we have great potential to leverage the existing financial infrastructure we have in place. 
that is key, and to then accelerate the flow of capital enormously. I think we're in a good place. That's the hope I'm here to share. <laughs> the challenge is to really, really capitalize on the infrastructure, the financial infrastructure we have in place that extends beyond landscapes, extends beyond sector, extends beyond place. It's a global infrastructure that is being developed to carry capital to these types of opportunities. To really start moving the billions, we need to really collaborate effectively, and to do that, we need to know our role and our role within that ecosystem, and then how to effectively put our capital to work. So this is where I'm going to ask you to go inward a moment. You know, it would be much better if we could have a conversation, but clearly I'm speaking to you, so you can have your own conversation with yourself, and I won't judge. <laughs> <laughs> and what I want you to consider, and this is practical to everyone in this room, whether you manage assets of others, whether you steward assets of others, whether you're a fund manager or advising a corporate in how to engage their assets most sustainably and productively, or you're in place building a business to really respond to the market needs. This conversation is for everyone because we all have a role to play. And these are the two honest conversations I would encourage you to have with yourself and I'll guide you through them. One is we need to move from what to how. So from what is responsible investing, sustainable finance, impact investing, to how to engage your capital most effectively and efficiently. The second conversation is understanding and playing your role in the broader financial ecosystem. The first conversation is important because if we have any hope of achieving the sustainable development goals, the simple reality is we need to activate all capital, all of it, whether it's impact investing in the private markets or whether it's public investments in negatively or positively screened mutual funds or investments that are made using ESG, environmental, social, and governance lens. We need it all. And none of it are better or worse. It's just different. And so when one thinks about how to really activate their capital, how to get it engaged fully, I challenge you to ask these three questions. What kind of capital do you have? How much capital do you have? And where is it housed? The kind of capital you have is very important because it addresses the interplay with impact. For example, philanthropy can address issues that debt and equity cannot. It is not better or worse, just needs to be understood because if we don't understand that, the expectations can be misaligned among investor and investee. The second question, how much money do you have? Vitally important. If you have investable assets that are $200,000, your option set is likely in the public markets where you can create agency with your capital and invest it aligned with sustainable finance goals is looking at mutual funds that have been positively or negatively screened or incorporate ESG elements. However, if you sit on resources that are much larger, 200 million in size, let's say, then your opportunity set widens enormously. You can think not only of how you engage your public investments, but also you can enter the private markets and think about how your capital can be directed in public equity and public debt, directly in projects or perhaps in funds. Third question, where is your money housed? This one is vitally important. Where the money is housed means where does it live? Who custodies it? Who controls it? If it sits in a large money center, your option set is quite narrow. We have found that the regulatory, legal, and operating reality of that type of capital is quite restricted. And so it does not have the opportunities and the options, even if it's a large amount like 200 million, to do a lot of the private investing in equity, in debt, that could be intellectually possible, 
because of the legal operating reality that that money lives in. We see money that lives in a registered investment advisor or perhaps in a family office or in a development finance institution as having more nimbleness, having more options in how it can move. These questions are important because they help you understand what is possible to accomplish with your capital and also the capital that you're talking to so that we have conversations that can meet each other and really create action. And then we can find a way to advocate for what we want to see happen with our capital in a productive way. As I talked about the inflexibility of money housed in large financial centers, it is not just the financial centers we have found that's inflexible, it's also the traditional markets writ large. I'm talking about the capital markets where the public equity and public debt opportunities live, as well as the local banks and country in place. They are not comfortable financing what they don't understand. If it doesn't fit in their box, it doesn't come in the box. And so this is a really fundamental thing to understand, and quite frankly, it's why this whole sustainable finance ecosystem evolved over the last 10, 15 years to simply finance businesses that had really great aims of creating sustainable and equitable outcomes as well as financial returns, but could not find access to capital in the traditional financial, traditional markets. The businesses that the impact the sustainable finance sector finances fall out of the box. And that's okay, but what we have to be constant of is how to build the ecosystem that we're working in so that it can meet traditional finance and begin to reach that source of capital because that is where the scaled capital lives. It does not live within the philanthropic resources. It does not live within the development finance community. It does not live with the nimble private capital that's raised and invested by high net worth individuals. The truly scaled capital lives in the traditional market. So we have to figure out how to build infrastructure and funds and transactions that begin to meet the norms of the traditional markets. So what do traditional investors provide capital to? What are we building towards? Business models that they understand and they will price according those risks that they understand. What they don't understand, new sectors like off-grid solar, new customer sectors like low-income populations. Microfinance is a great example here. 20, 25 years ago, I'm sure most of us in this room are familiar with the challenge that microfinance put forward to make financing accessible to the poor. It was believed that that wasn't possible, that the poor was not a client that could be served with financial return. Here we are fast forward two decades later, and that is a client that can support capital, can support debt and repay. It is a bankable sector, and what we have seen is that sector has migrated and moved into the traditional markets and is acquiring finance to scale and grow financial inclusion globally. So these types of businesses that are falling out of the capital markets is what we finance at Calvert Impact Capital. It's what many of us finance in this room. But the challenge that I put to you is thinking about not just financing that one transaction or that one business, but thinking about what bridge we're building to the traditional markets. What piece of financing is following the capital that you're putting into play? What is the scale capital to take the project you're working on and expand it exponentially? That is the second question that we need to ask ourselves and be able to understand. Because as businesses cross this bridge towards the capital market, what happens? What happens is they grow in budget, they grow in revenue, they grow in profits, over time, they establish a track record of performance, of repayment, and returns. So what actually happens is that gap between real and perceived risk decreases, 
And the business case can be understood by the capital markets, and they can go directly to those resources and scale their business. But if we don't do this right, if we don't build a bridge to somewhere, we're going to leave these businesses stranded. So how do we do that? What we have found is you have to let go of the silo you work in and look beneath to the structure, the financial infrastructure about how that money is moving. So this is a conversation less about sector and geography and more about how the money moves and what templates can be replicated across geography and sector that we have seen respond well to investor appetite and can scale to the capital markets, cross that bridge. So I'll give you an example. Off-grid solar in Africa. It's a sector that began growing about a decade ago simply because the business model started to emerge and the technology advanced to where it was affordable to consider moving household solar into the rural parts of the African continent. What we saw is about five to seven years ago, financial intermediaries began to emerge on the continent. Ones that were addressing the capital needs of those small and growing businesses that were bringing the solar off-grid solutions to communities. They were new funds that saw the capital gaps, simply providing lines of credits or scaled debt capital, or they were established funds that had sector expertise in other areas and move sideways to accommodate and lend or invest in the off-grid solar sector. What we have seen is that a financial supply chain, a capital continuum, has now emerged in place on the African continent that responds to the business capital needs that these emerging small and growing businesses have that specialize in the off-grid solar energy sector. When they grow, needing equity and then needing debt, then needing scale debt, they have places to go to get that type of capital so their business does not stall and fall off the capital continuum. Eventually, we're seeing them build and be able to access traditional finance and therefore very much scale their business in an economical way. What our role is today, we have seen, is therefore understanding now within this emerging supply chain where there is capital gaps and where we can most effectively put our capital to work collectively with others. That is an example of a supply chain that's emerging and filling in. So how do you play along the supply chain? There's many roles to play. You can directly invest in businesses with debt or equity. There's an opportunity to indirectly invest in a fund, in a special purpose vehicle, and have your investment in a fund that's then on lending to projects in place. If you have development financial resources or philanthropic, you also can play a catalytic role by coming in as risk capital, leveraging, monetizing the private capital, bringing it in in ways that then it can scale and de-risk and eventually bridge the gap to the traditional markets. The key to understanding what role to play is back to the three original questions I posed how to put your capital to work. You must fully understand what type of capital it is, the access you have to that capital, and the nimbleness of the capital you have. You need to understand where you fit in the supply chain. And so within that, not only what your capital can do most effectively and efficiently, but also the development of the market. It does us no good to keep pouring in debt capital if what we really need is equity capital in a supply chain of an evolving sector. We need businesses to have the right type of capital at the right time. So what that means is we need to let go of our silos, be honest with ourselves about what we can do. And along those lines, just a final thought about being honest about what we can do. It's important to know what your role is, but it's important also to know what your role isn't. What I have found is this term impact investing and sustainable finance is very trendy these days. There's good and bad to that. 
But the reality from what we see at Calvert Impact Capital, and I'm sure you see too, is that not everything has a business solution. Not everything you can have a solution to by investing assets behind. Some issues do need legal diplomatic resources and tools to lead and finance to follow. So with that, that's why I think we have great promise today in this room with the collection of individuals and perspectives so diverse beyond finance, beyond sector, beyond legal and diplomatic lenses to really figure out what role we play, how we can collaborate, and how we can really accelerate the movement that we're in the middle of. So with that, enjoy your day, have good conversation, and I hope you come away with really understanding fully where you can play a strong and an active role. Thank you.